Brace the pain like I'm Nagato Got no father like I'm Naruto Keep the blade on me, Ichigo Who really wanna go toe for toe? DTR from Tokyo Diamonds whipping up on the stove Lucky man like a four-leaf glow Diamonds wanna go Hello guys, welcome back to my channel This is Nagato and for today's tutorial I'm basically going to be showcasing on how to install RetroArch cores and basically just RetroArch onto your PlayStation Classic using BleemSync 1.01 assuming that y'all guys already have BleemSync 1.1 installed um, this is how you're going to go from this process if y'all guys don't know how to install it I'll leave a video from previously on how to install it for my channel also it'll be somewhere right here at this marker in the video so if you just click above watch that video first and then you can come back to this video on learning how to install RetroArch but with that being said I'm going to go straight into on how to do this and I'm gonna go very in-depth this process may be a little bit long but I'm gonna make sure you guys understand each part of the tutorial so first things first what you want to go ahead and do make a blank folder onto your PC just call this game images and then I'm gonna show you like the meaning of this in a second let me go ahead and pop this up so basically these are all of the game images for your course so for example if you had nes games if i go open this up real quick and if you go to box art right here you'll see basically all of the nes box art and cover art for your games so this is it so if you have a full collection and you wanted to test all of your nes games and you want to have like with cover art as well this is basically why it's useful and I'll show you each download link with that that's why basically we're gonna make a blank folder first just put game images so and I'll show you the website real quick let me go ahead and boot it up and all the links and descriptions and programs I'm using will be in the description below but if you go to this website right here called thumbnail pack dot lib retro and depending on what system you want to install via uh, retro arc for your PlayStation Classic, you could go ahead and download these .zip files. So let's say if you wanted Atari 2600, it will download all the box art and like title art and all that stuff. And so basically, this is like the full collection as of to date, and it tells you when um this stuff got updated as well. So pretty much all of this stuff has been updated like as of 2019. So it's pretty recent. Also, what you would need to do since we were talking about websites, you will need to go ahead and go into this URL right here. And now what you want to do is go ahead and basically go ahead and download dot rd or database rdb.zip. And also you could download the cheats.zip as well if you do want to use cheats within playing your retro art games. So you download these two files to your desktop. And then also right here, what you want to do is go ahead and download the zip file because this is basically all the cores and this is how where the magic really happens. And this from here, this is where you could choose whatever core and this is how you play your games. So go ahead and download the zip that states underscore all cores.zip. And now what you want to do, if you want to download the PSP core, which is kind of different, you got to go to special and then you got to go click on this one core underscore PSC and then this is a PSP core right here. So once you have all those files as shown here, here's my PSP core, here's the database core, here's the all core zip and also the cheats. What you also want to do since you already got your game images as well, I'll show you where I got that. Go ahead and make a blank folder on your desktop right here called test games and this is where we're going to put all of our games are at so for example go ahead and make sure your games are lab labeled as well um, like for example if, are you if you want to do all your nintendo nes games make sure just label it nes or you could just name it or you know nintendo and then just put all your nes games in here if you want to do super nintendo do the same thing genesis same thing so just to all files could be very organized because this process does kind of get a little uh, hectic towards like the rest of the tutorial but i'll show you what i mean so once you you know got your test games got your cores you got your database rdb file and your cheats what you want to do now is the same usb drive that you had installed with bleem sync on it go ahead and plug it into your pc and then i'll prop it up right here right now make sure of course it's fat 32 if you already uh, did this process before you should see like your bleem sync and stuff like this first up what you want to do is go ahead and take your blank folder and what you want to do now is go ahead and transfer all over your games to your USB drive so let me go ahead and stretch this out 
and then right here what it's going to do now is basically transfer all of my Game Boy Advance games, uh, Nintendo, and also my Super Nintendo games. So I'll pause the video right here, and I'll come back once that process is done. And then I'll explain a little bit more about the other steps as well. Alright guys, as shown here, all of my games have successfully transferred over from my desktop to my USB drive. And as you see here, let me just go into my test games folder. Just go ahead and verify whatever games you put on your flash drive as well. It's on your flash drive, of course. I didn't remember that I had 82 games for my GBA, and I've had like 600 or something. Yeah, 622 games for my NES. And you could just do this just to quickly verify that your games have successfully transferred over to my USB. And now what we want to do, guys, from here is go back to our USB drive. And now we're going to focus on to basically put our cores as well as our database files and also basically our cover images. So you could basically leave this to the side or minimize it. And we're gonna be focusing on the database RDB file. So from these sets of files right here, I just put this to the side. Go ahead and just unzip each file into a separate folder as I've shown here. So once you unzip, you should get your cheats, your database RDB, your PSP core, which is this one, and then basically all of our cores. The one we're gonna focus on first is the database RDB folder. And I'll open it up right quick. This basically contains the database files for all of the cores, so as shown here. So you see PSP, you see all of the Sega and NES and stuff like that. So what you want to do is go ahead and you can put this database file to the side. And then what you want to do is go ahead and reopen back up your flash drive folder, which is shown here. And then where we want to go to now is Blame Sync. Go to OPT retroarch.config retroarch again and now we're going to go basically to our database folder right here ready b and now what we want to do is go ahead and hit Control a and copy all of our database files to this directory onto our flash drive this process shouldn't take too long and then once that process is done we're going to focus on cores and then we also want to focus on the PSP core a little bit as well since that process to set up is kind of different from just dragging and dropping the rest of the core so once you have your database RDB file transfer over to your USB you could X this out and now the next step what we want to do is go ahead and focus on our regular cores right here so it will be underscore all underscore cores and if you open this, this is basically where all the magic happens. So basically, this allows us to play a bunch of emulators all in one place. So as you see here, y'all guys, if y'all ever used RetroArch before, you may be noticing some of like you know the popular emulators for RetroArch, like SNES 9X. Um, I'm trying to see if I remember anyone Pico Drive for like the Sega games and such and such. But with that being stated, we're gonna go back to our root to our USB drive and I'm gonna show you guys exactly where all the cores have to go. So what we wanna go to now is Blame Sync, OPT, RetroArch, go to dot config, RetroArch again, and now where it says cores, go ahead and click that and just control A and copy and paste all of our cores into the center directory. So now we've basically done two steps out of four. We got our cores done, our, our original cores and also our database ready to be. For the PSP core, it's kind of a little different, but that's okay as well. So what we want to do for our PSP core, go ahead and open it up and then go ahead and open up RetroArch. Go ahead and open this file.config as well and then RetroArch again. And then where it says cores, this is our PSP core, which you could just dump in the same directory as the regular cores as well. And now what you want to do real quick as well for the PSP, go ahead and go RetroArch. And then you got to focus on this RetroArch-Core.OptionCFG. So what we're going to do is go ahead and go back once out of RetroArch and basically just recopy over this file in this directory. So just replace that. And now you basically successfully install the PSP core as well. So we got three steps done from that part and now we got to focus on our game images. So where we want to do now, oh actually before we do game images, if y'all guys do want to use cheats, you can just basically copy the cheats into this folder as well. And you could do the same process, just hit control A and just copy all of the cheats for virtual arc and let that do its thing. So I'll just minimize that screen. Now we've done the 
put our all our cores onto our USB. We did a database. We also did the cheats if you guys wanted to do that. And now we gotta focus on basically our game images. So once that um this process is done, basically uploading the cheats. What we're gonna go to is game images, and depending on what um core and basically what game you have all since I'm just gonna be testing out our my PSP games and also my NES and Game Boy Advance what we want to do is go to each folder itself and basically what we want to do is go ahead and just go ahead and copy all of these folders to the first original folder so we won't have double folders and sets so you could delete this one right here and then you go do the same process for each one as well so for example if you go here now you just have one folder except having double folder so we're going to do the same process for the nes one just go double click through that drag and drop to this section right here and then we're going to just go ahead and do that secondary folders it's not needed and the reason why we're doing that is due to the um if you had it in that format and try to transfer it over um retroarch would have a hard time reading the actual box art files so Gotta do this for think, four more for me, real quick. Just go ahead and drag that over as well. And then here, just X that out. And then we gotta focus on the Super Nintendo. Oh, I think actually for the Super Nintendo one, I made this one by accident due to the fact. The um, actual thumb art for this, or the box art, excuse me, the file is corrupted from the main website. Alright guys, so as shown here, basically all of our cheats have successfully transferred over to our USB. And now what we want to do is basically put our thumbnail slash cover art into Bleem Sync. So what we want to go to is back to our root on our flash drive, go to Bleem Sync, OPT once again, RetroArc.config, RetroArc. And then what we want to do is go ahead and make a folder called thumbnails in all lowercase thumbnails. And then what we want to do now is go ahead and minimize this. Go to game images. And then just go ahead and dump our images to our flash drive. Oops, let me cancel that right now because I accidentally uploaded the zip to my USB. We need the actual folders. Yep, and then just drag and drop to your USB as well. I'm gonna pause the video right here since it may take a little second. And then once that process is done, I'll explain where to go from there. So as shown here guys, all of our thumbnails has successfully copied over to our USB drive. So we could just double check that our box art are in here. So as you see here, basically this is all our PSP box art. But now what we wanna do, we finished all of the steps via the PC. We basically, if I go back to my desktop, we basically put our PSP core onto our USB. We put all of the rest of the cores on the USB as well. We did a database, the cheats, and also we did the game images. So now what we wanna do is go ahead, plug in your PlayStation Classic in to whatever uh, USB device, and also plug in your USB drive with Bleem Sync on it, and I'll meet you guys back onto the TV and I'll showcase where to go to basically load up games via RetroArch. So I'll meet you guys back on the PlayStation Classic. Alright guys, so assuming that you're on the PlayStation Classic right now, what you want to do of course is make sure your USB is connected into the second slot and also you have your controller is plugged into the first slot. Where we want to go to now is RetroArch just by selecting X. And now once that boots up, where we want to go to now is to the second option called low content. And then from here, guys, where we want to go to is basically the fourth option here with the slash. Go ahead and click X. And then from here, we're going to go scroll all the way down to media. And then basically, this is our USB. If you guys remember from on the PC, the same folders where we want to go to is our test games. And now whatever, uh, you know, games you have on here from GBA, NES, SNES. You can choose whichever one you want for example i'm going to just be doing snes and then i'm going to scroll all the way down to one of my favorite games i'm going to be doing uh super mario world 
so I'm gonna go ahead and just try to find that so that's that and then you choose whatever emulator you want I'm just gonna be using this one right here and then as shown here that's how you successfully run games on your PlayStation Classic so now from here it's running in real live time if you guys um, hit select and I think yes yeah, select and um, start at the same time you can either resume the game restart it take a screenshot have a save state add the game to favorites and these other options as well and since we have the cheats you basically um, could also load cheats for you know the game that does support it within the um, little pack that we installed onto our USB if you guys did enjoy this video please be sure to leave a like or a comment down below if you guys need any help setting this process up but with that being said my name is Nagato and I'm signing out thank you guys for watching I appreciate all y'all